Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have for you my unboxing and initial impressions of the brand new official retail version of the Galaxy S9 on Verizon. I want to say thank you very much to Verizon for allowing me to check out the Galaxy S9. But not only that, I want to share with you guys the unboxing, the setup, how does it work with last year's Gear VR, as to my understanding we don't actually have a new Gear VR announced in 2018. So this is TK, let's go ahead and check out the Galaxy S9 and the Gear VR. So what we have here is the S9. This is again the retail version, 64 gigs of internal storage. It has the uh, you know Snapdragon 845 running there. And this is the Gear VR from last year, the new casing. You'll notice the new uh, box. Again, it comes with the remote. It has the USB-C adapter. It should work directly with our device as from a form factor, this is really not that far off from the last year's Galaxy S8. This is the 64 gig model of the S9. Now there are supposed to be other models that'll have more storage in them. But as far as I understand, this is gonna be what they're starting with as a base. Uh, not only that this is the coral blue version uh, although not any relation to the fact that the blue coloring is here what we get in the box uh, this is the verizon version lte advanced compatible the s9 pre-installed sim card from verizon a wall usb charger stereo headset akg tuned uh, usb con connector as well as a quick reference guide and opening up, it's a little different this year. They don't actually have the phone right in front of us. They have the box with the uh, SIM removal tool, as well as the instruction manuals. Again, nothing really that important here. And here is the phone. Uh, nice. Now, as I mentioned to you guys, this is the Coral Blue version. I've been waiting for this since the Note 7. I cannot explain how long has it been, been waiting basically just to get a Coral Blue out of a carrier in the US and definitely looks amazing. Uh, again, this is the S9 variant. There is an S9 Plus that's as well coming out. Um, and if, as you notice, main signature here, the fingerprint sensor is now below the camera. It's no longer to the side of that. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the plastic. Oh yeah, that's very nice there. And and you know what? It actually feels pretty good. Uh, I like the, the way the device feels. It has that nice metallic feeling. Uh, the shininess, of course, is going to be a fingerprint magnet, but that's expected. Uh, we are supposed to have wireless charging, uh, quick charge technology as well on the USB Type-C. Obviously, we still have the 3.5mm headphone jack. Bottom firing speaker with a microphone. But if I'm not mistaken, we now actually also have stereo speakers. So they're using the, uh, the uh, earpiece as the tweeter, in a sense, to the bassy, uh, more low tones on the speaker at the bottom. We'll get a chance to check that out. Uh, this is a 5.8 inch quad hd display uh, obviously infinity display as we have a dual curvature on both sides of the device as well as the 8 megapixel front facing sensor i'm going to go ahead and turn it on give it a second to finish up uh, this is going to be out of the box running android oreo where most of the other carrier versions as far as the s8 and the s8 plus and the note uh, 8 are going to be receiving the android oreo update very soon uh, you'll notice there's an led of course the earpiece and the 8 megapixel sensor uh, Bixby button is still present with a volume rocker on the left, power button on the right, nothing else. On the back, we have a 12 megapixel uh, dual aperture camera. Uh, so we have an f1.5 and an f2.4 aperture with a mechanical aperture closing and opening. We'll get a chance to check that out. The fingerprint sensor, as I mentioned, is on the bottom. Wireless charging, dual tone LED flash, as well as, uh, I think this is basically your heart and fingerprint sensor. Uh, not fingerprint sensor, the fingerprint sensor and the heart rate sensor sitting on the right as we normally have with our devices. On the top, uh, the SIM tray, which will house uh, not only your SIM card, but your SD card option. Of course, one of the microphone. So this is the Snapdragon 845 variant. There is gonna be obviously an Exynos version, but for the US on Verizon, this is gonna be the device that we're gonna go with. Last thing, USB type A to USB type C connector, AKG tuned headphones, as I mentioned to you guys before, Samsung charger. Here is the USB type uh, A to USB type C OTG adapter that we're gonna be using to transfer our data onto our device using a Samsung smart switch. Before we go too far, I wanna share with you guys uh, some of the the main differences that we have from last year's Galaxy S8 to the Galaxy S9 and does it make sense to upgrade from one to the other? It's going to be really relative but I'll explain. Uh, the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus are still running Android 7.0 at this to this point and will hopefully receive the Android 8.0 upgrade soon. The Galaxy S9 starts off with the Android Oreo build and so that's what we're going to be looking at today. As far as uh, size and uh, weight, it is a little bit heavier and I'm not sure why, but overall slightly heavier than what we had last year. We still have the Quad HD display, we still have the Infinity display, the pixel count is pretty much the same. The sensor on the back now has dual apertures from f1.5 to 2.4, where the one from the S8 had a, a fixed one at f1.7. 
we have dual tone LED flash, the same 8 megapixel front facing camera. Uh, of course, we did get a bump from the 835 to the 845 on the Snapdragon running 2.8 gigahertz as opposed to the 2.3 gigahertz that we ran, ran there. Uh, Qualcomm 630 as opposed to this 530 for the uh, Adreno uh, GPU. 4 gigs of RAM, 3000 milliamp battery, everything's pretty much the same. Nano SIM, all of that good stuff. One of the newer steps that we see here within the setup option is the ability to set up multiple ability ways of unlocking our device. Intelligence scan, face recognition, iris scanner, uh, set of fingerprint print scanner of course as well as set up a pin or a password uh, those are new options and the reason I say that is because the intelligence scan really is a combination of face recognition and iris scanner you can use them independent but if you want to use them to have a much faster unlocking experience and much more secure experience it will use both of them and of course all of these things are built into the front facing sensors that we have and here we have it stock uh, pretty much nothing installed at this point uh, you notice Bixby is still sitting on the left the Bixby button is on the left side and it will get initialized on the right uh, we have some of the Verizon applications installed let's go ahead and swipe up we have a few games installed Verizon voicemail and then I think most of the Verizon apps are also installed and just put into this folder of course you can add all of the other ones in there if you want to keep them grouped uh, but other than that pretty easy let's go ahead and see real quick as far as the settings Lock screen, phone updates, software update. Let's see if there's any updates. Check for updates right now. I just want to see if there's any updates coming in uh, and make sure that installed so we have the best experience. Um, okay, so other than that, really, uh, display, I think if I'm not mistaken, should be set to... Uh, yeah, so it's set to 1080p. It's not set to Quad HD. I like to set it up directly to Quad HD. It's done that way just to basically save you some uh, battery. But if you're not aware of it, make sure you go in there directly and set that up. Um, and let's go back into settings. Here you have it, Android 8.0 with uh, Samsung Experience version 9.0. So we are not matching in the numbers, but uh, I think if we just click it here, we'll be able to get the Easter egg and then press and hold. And we should be able to get the nice little <laughs> octopus. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, I like the fact that it's simple enough. I mean, there's not much really installed on it. Storage wise, uh, we do have uh, 15 gigs available uh, used. So about, I would say 40, you know, about 49 available space. So not that bad. We have about 50 gigs roughly of space available. Everything else is pre-installed on what we have on the device. Um, and as far as memory, again, we have the four gigs of RAM and it's using about 1.9. So we have almost about two gigs of RAM available for us. Um, overall, it's pretty nice, pretty simple. Uh, I think some of the applications here, we do have Samsung Pay, we do have the Google Play Store, all the Google Play services. Uh, Maps is installed. Uh, of course, Android Pay is installed, which is very nice. So out of the box, you're gonna get a lot of these things that are pretty much set up. Uh, and then of course, Chrome, um, and you can customize. And of course you have Google search built in. I think the assistant, if I'm not mistaken, is also uh, here. You just need to set that up. So you'll notice right there, the modes now on the camera is no longer swiped as an entirety. It's actually brought in directly. So you can swipe between one or another, select the focus, auto mode, and it tells you what it is. Slow, super slow-mo, uh, the, emo the emoji ones. Uh, super slow-mo is gonna be definitely one of the ones I'm looking forward to checking out. Let's see, can we do one? We'll do auto mode and recording. Yes, get started. So I tried the best that I could to actually get it to grab. Um, and on recording, it recorded three different clips uh, that are supposed to be <laughs> slow-mo. We'll go ahead and dismiss this one. It added its own music to it, its own customization. You notice that's how fast my fingers were going. And if I skip forward to the last one, this will be the one that's, again, super slow-mo. This is the same gesture, but again, <laughs> you saw that little ripple effect on the hand. Uh, very nice, it's very simple to use. Uh, I think uh, the ability of here is AR emoji. You just have to say mail, we'll say next, creating my emoji, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And that's gonna be an exciting little thing to see how that goes. How's... Hey, <laughs> what? Uh, I think it's because I was smiling, so okay. hoping you guys could see how it looks like here but uh, let's go ahead and swipe this over uh, it's hard to get in at the right angle with the camera for you guys to see what I'm doing so creating I'm, I'm already you know using this of course I can switch it over I can turn it into I'm not sure what that is I could turn into a cat and open up close my eyes it's actually not bad uh, it actually does a pretty good job and yeah that that's not working right there just to do a quick audio sample I'm gonna go sideways yes definitely I'll say okay. Skip the ad. Hello, hi everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Of course, we have Zoom option. My review of the Ceramonic SRWM4C. This is a budget-friendly entry-level microphone level system. It's a wireless system, of course. It sure enough. Access to be able to actually enhance your video from the audio. Sure enough, volume is coming in here when I'm playing it. Side, meaning giving you direct subject capturing, so for audio quality. And not only that, it's wireless, so you are no longer. Stereo speakers on our device. 
Uh, real quick, I'm just going to double check here. Yes, we are able to go to 1080p 60. That's the highest resolution on my video. Um, overall, I think it's pretty good. I like the, the way the setup is. Let's just do a real quick front-facing and back-facing camera video just to show you guys the capabilities. We went ahead and started off with the front-facing camera. We have an 8 megapixel front-facing camera at f1.7. Switched over to the back-facing camera. This is a 12 megapixel sensor with an aperture 1.7 uh, sorry, 1.5 all the way up to 2.4. Uh, but the main benefit whenever you're in video, obviously, is OIS and a great sensor. Uh, we do also have HDR that's supposed to be turned on, as well as the fact that we're able to record up to 4K at 60 frames per second on this camera. Now, I'm not using 4K, but I'm using a 1080p 60 frames per second just to kind of keep the uh, the timeline consistent with my video as that's what I usually edit it at. So here I have uh, the Gear VR from last year. Again, this is the 2017 model. It is supporting the S8 and the S8 Plus. So it should be, in theory, supporting the S9 and the S9 Plus very easily. Uh, what we need to do, obviously, is remove the front cover. That's just the plating. And I already have the USB Type-C connector, which is what we expect from it. Uh, the main thing you want to make sure is that your device is on. So unlock the device. I don't have any pins on it yet. Uh, insert it into and it says connect. You notice right there, it recognized the controller. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. This is downloading and installing. So there is an app that is downloading, but it recognized the controller the moment I touched it. So it automatically detects, which is very nice. Uh, next thing we're going to need to do is just insert the USB-C cable he connection here and snap it on. And you'll notice right there, the adjustment came down right away and the offsets that we have on the top, bottom and everything is actually pretty good. Unfortunately, I forgot that first setup usually means downloading and setting up the app. So here it is, starting the Gear VR, connect via uh, mobile network, we'll say okay, agree, next, okay. So there's gonna be some download stuff in, uh, and we're gonna install all these other applications. So. I'll let this go through here, uh, but initially, as far as just getting it set up and using it with the Gear VR, I'm pretty happy. It will fit. It'll work perfectly with the 2017 Gear VR. Just make sure you put in, let it set up. Welcome to your Samsung Gear VR. Initial impressions of this device, I'm excited. I'm really excited to see the S9 and how it performs. Um, I'm a big fan of the Samsung devices. As you may be aware of, I do have the Note 8. Now, the Note 8 obviously is 6.1, 6.2 inch display. This is 5.8. So this is more of the smaller of the three devices since the uh, S9 Plus will be the medium one. We have a single sensor again, but we do have the dual aperture uh, configuration there. We'll be able to switch between f1.5 and f2.4. The two pictures I have for you right now are taken at the same time in here in the office. But what I did is I turned off all the lights and I took a picture, one at f1.5, one at f2.4. The 2.4 picture, as you guys can see, is extremely dark. But once I switched it on f1.5, that was actually the same level that I did not turn on any lights. All I did is switch it over to f1.5. So the possibilities with this camera are going to be amazing. I'm really excited to see this. Let me know in the comments below again, specifically what you guys would like to see about the uh, Galaxy S9 or the S9 Plus. As for the most part, software experience are pretty much the same. We do have a second sensor on the S9 Plus. Uh, and again, hopefully I'll be able to get that one in the near future. But other than that, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for supporting me here on the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.